It was just another boring afternoon routine patrol for Officer Daniels and Mitchell, where they decided to chat with their colleagues. Their conversation was interrupted when an elderly woman fell in front of them. However, instead of helping, Officers Daniels and Mitchell couldn't stop themselves from laughing. But their laughter was short-lived. After laughing, they soon found out who this mysterious woman was and how much trouble they would be in. Who exactly was the elderly woman? Should they apologize for their behavior? And most importantly, would they truly lose their job if they didn't? But before we start, smash the like button and make sure to subscribe if you haven't and hit that notification bell so that you won't miss any new stories. When officers Daniels and Mitchell first joined the police force, they were eager young recruits ready to uphold the law and serve their city. However, that changed as their valor and honor dulled into the men they were now. Men who would laugh at a woman falling instead of helping her. The boring routine patrols and petty crimes seemed redundant to them. They felt slighted, their potential not used for work that they deemed worthy of their caliber. Clara always ensured that her outfits looked pristine and her hair was always neatly styled. With a sharp intake of breath, she stumbled as she fell, the bag on her shoulder also tumbling to the ground, releasing most of its content for everyone to see. Leaning against the building, officers Daniels and Mitchell were only a stone's throw away from where Clara fell. The thing they did next would change the course of their career forever. Instead of rushing to her aid after hearing her slightly panicked yelp, the two men did something unthinkable. An inappropriate chuckle escaped from Officer Daniel's lips, but this was not the worst, as Officer Mitchell released a roar of laughter. Poor Clara, who had hurt herself slightly from her skin scraping against stone, tried to push herself off the floor. Daniel remarked, a smirk playing on his face. Mitchell, playing along, responded to this grinning, a literal trip down memory lane. As they exchanged jokes, they didn't see the disapproving stares of onlookers as a small crowd formed around the incident. A young woman rushed forward toward Clara, gently turning her over and checking to see if she had any injuries. As she stood up straight again, she cast a nasty glance at the two officers who were still making jokes about what had just happened. Seeing how they were too engrossed to notice if anything was wrong with Clara, the woman shot them a sneer. How could you? The young woman's voice trembled with fury as she addressed the two policemen, who turned to her, stopping joking around. The two officers felt untouchable in their uniform, but when they found out who Clara truly was, they would find that that wasn't really the case. She continued, is this the kind of protection and service we're supposed to expect from you? She spat. Officer Mitchell was the first to open his mouth and asked, Who is she? To Officer Daniels, keeping his voice low to avoid drawing attention to it. Officer Daniels merely shrugged, his usual confident demeanor wavering. I don't know, but I have the feeling that we need to find out. In the meantime, Clara was gently escorted to a nearby bench. Concerned bystanders tried to make her feel comfortable and were tending to the small scrapes on her skin. As Clara sat on the bench nursing her minor injuries, a storm of emotions raged within her. The laughter of the officers echoed in her ears, their faces etched in her memory. Over the years, she had noticed the dwindling number of officers patrolling the streets. The city was growing, and with it came new challenges. Crime rates were on the rise, and the police force seemed stretched thin. She understood the pressures they were under, the long hours and the thankless tasks. By the next morning, the incident had become the talk of the town. Coffee shops, grocery stores, and street corners buzzed with hushed conversations. As days turned into weeks, the initial shock of the incident gave way to a growing discontent. The community's trust in the police force, once unshakable, began to wane. Parents cautioned their children to be wary, and elderly residents like Clara felt a pang of unease at the sight of a police car. The city had a rich history of revering its officers. They were seen as heroes, protectors of the peace, and upholders of justice. The city mourned the loss of its once pristine image of the police force, yearning for a time when officers were symbols of hope and trust. When officers Daniels and Mitchell stepped into the precinct the next day, the atmosphere was noticeably different. 
The usual morning banter was absent, replaced by a heavy silence. As they made their way to their desks, they could feel the weight of many eyes upon them. The usual nods of acknowledgement were missing, and in their place were cold, distant stares. As the day wore on, it became clear that Daniels and Mitchell had been branded the shameful duo of the precinct. Their actions had not only embarrassed themselves, but had also cast a shadow over the entire department. The weight of the situation pressed heavily on Daniels and Mitchell. Their earlier indifference had transformed into a gnawing anxiety. Back at their desks, officers Daniels and Mitchell immediately booted up their computers. They accessed the city's database, hoping to find any information on Clara. Despite their exhaustive efforts, Clara's identity remained elusive. She was like a ghost, present in their memories but absent from all records. Exhausted and on the verge of giving up, Daniels decided to take a break and wandered into the precinct's archives. Amidst the dusty shelves and old case files, a yellowed newspaper caught his eye. Curiosity peaked, and he began to skim through it. As he flipped the pages, an article grabbed his attention. The headline hinted at a significant event from years ago, and as he read on, he realized he might have stumbled upon a crucial piece of the puzzle. Hastily, Daniels rushed back to their shared desk. The old newspaper clutched tightly in his hand. Mitchell, you need to see this. The article detailed a community event from decades ago, celebrating the resilience and spirit of the city's residents. It spoke of notable figures, philanthropists, and everyday heroes. But what caught the officer's attention was a mention of a woman named Clara who had played a pivotal role in a community project. The details matched Clara's description, and the timeline seemed to fit. Beside the article was an old black and white photograph. It showcased a group of people, but one face stood out, a younger Clara. Her eyes, sparkling with determination and kindness, looked back at them. They had inadvertently discovered a piece of her past, a chapter of her life that had been immortalized in print. They had ridiculed a woman who had once been celebrated in the very city they vowed to protect. The guilt was overwhelming. They had to make amends, not just for their sake, but for Clara's and the legacy she represented. The officers began to plan their approach. They would visit Clara, face their mistake head on, and offer a heartfelt apology. With a deep breath, officers Daniels and Mitchell stood outside Clara's residence. They knocked gently, waiting for the door to open. As Clara greeted them, her eyes held a mix of surprise and weariness. The officers cleared their throats, hoping she would grant them a few moments of her time to seek her forgiveness. Inside Clara's cozy living room, the officers began, We deeply regret our actions, ma'am. Daniels began, his eyes downcast. Mitchell added, We failed in our duty, not just as officers but as human beings. Their apology was heartfelt, their remorse evident. Clara listened intently, her face inscrutable. After a long pause, she finally spoke. We all make mistakes, she began, her voice gentle. What matters is that we learn from them. Her words were filled with grace and understanding, showcasing her magnanimity. She acknowledged their sincere remorse and in her wisdom offered them a chance at redemption. Wanting to make amends in any way they could, the officers offered to drive Clara to her special place. As they arrived, the officers realized they were at a beautifully maintained memorial park. In front of them stood a statue, a tribute to community heroes of the past. Clara's eyes shimmered with tears as she shared stories of the individuals immortalized in stone, reminding the officers of the values they had vowed to uphold. As Clara continued, she dropped a revelation that left the officers stunned. My younger son, she said with a hint of pride, took up his brother's mantle and is now the chief of police. The weight of this information settled heavily on Daniels and Mitchell. They had laughed at the mother of their leader, a woman who had given so much to the city and its police force. Seeing their shock, Clara gently continued. I didn't tell my son about the incident. I believe that you both would realize your mistake and come to apologize. Her faith in their inherent goodness and the possibility of redemption was evident. Everyone can lose their way, she said softly. 
but it's never too late to find the right path again. With heads bowed, they made a silent vow to Clara, her heroic son, and themselves. They would strive to be better, to uphold the honor of their roles, and to serve their community with genuine compassion and respect. As days turned into weeks, the community began to notice the change in Officers Daniels and Mitchell. Their genuine efforts to make amends and their dedication to their roles slowly began to rebuild the trust that had been broken. The story of Officers Daniels and Mitchell became a beacon of hope for the city. The tale was a reminder that it's never too late to right one's wrongs and find one's way back to honor.